day in this neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? This is your brain. This is drugs. This is your brain on drugs. I'm John Cleese, and today I'm here to address a very serious issue, an issue with the potential to affect us all. Subliminal advertising. A very subversive technique which uses images flashed before our eyes that last only a split second, but just long enough to imprint in our vulnerable minds a product's name. Not just that either. Sophisticated vocal tricks are sometimes used without our realizing it at a conscious level. In all honesty, I don't know where to begin. Consciousness is something. I mean, the fact that we're capable of experiencing something, even though logically it makes more sense that we shouldn't be experiencing anything at all to begin with, it's weird. It's really weird. I mean, the fact that existence is possible seems impossible. But whatever. I don't mind consciousness. Well, not as much as I used to. When I was 16, I used to hate everything that made me. I hated that I was poor. I hated that I was ugly. I hated that I was afraid. I hated that I was a fucking nobody. But I never accepted my fate either. I would always go to the gym. I used to make up ideas in how to become rich and successful, just like everyone else. I tried to better my life by pushing myself to a vision but I could only push myself so far till I gave up because I had no drive, no push. That is, until I met Billy. Look around, I look around, I see a lot of new faces. <laughs> Shut up! Which means a lot of you have been breaking the first two rules of Fight Club. in Fight Club the strongest and smartest men who've ever lived. I see all this potential, and I see it squandered. God damn it, an entire generation pumping gas, waiting tables, slaves with white collars. Advertising has us chasing cars and clothes, working jobs we hate so we can buy shit we don't need. the middle children of history, man. No purpose or place. We have no great war, no great depression. Our great war is a spiritual war. Our great depression is our lives. We've all been raised on television to believe that one day we'd all be millionaires and movie gods and rock stars, but we won't. We're slowly learning that fact. We're very, very pissed off. Around the time I was 16, I got a notebook. I had the idea of writing journal entries in that notebook because I always imagined being old and looking back at what I was thinking and feeling as I was in the process of living life, right? But when I first started writing in that notebook, I wrote about how much I hated life, how much I hated myself, how much I hated everything. Why? for the same reason that I hated my consciousness. I was poor, ugly, afraid, a nobody. And as time passed, my environment started pushing me to a dark thought process. My thoughts became more aggressive in that notebook, more violent. Soon, I had some impulsiveness to do things, and I did things that I never thought about doing before. It was as if something that was not me took a hold of me showed me a side of me that I never knew existed. I called it Billy. I had this notebook for three years. In the past three years, I experienced some of the most frightening, 
diabolical shit that came out of my own consciousness. There were days that being skinned alive sounded better than experiencing the shit that Billy manifested. But that doesn't mean I hated the concept of Billy. Billy made life worth living for. It was like living the reality that you always wanted to live in some way. I mean, Billy took my fear of life since Billy was more fucking frightening. It made me not think I was nobody anymore. It made me read books when I was really fucking stupid. It made me experience some wild shit that I don't think I would have experienced if it wasn't for Billy. Billy was like entering an unknown realm of consciousness, but one that I always wanted to be in. I just didn't know it yet. Of course, every beginning has an ending. All the pages of this notebook ripped out and destroyed. I realized that as I began writing my life in that notebook, that notebook unconsciously became part of me. It became me. So any goals that wasn't Billy's book, I set out to achieve. The thing is, I hated being a nobody. Billy was bigger than life. I feared life. Billy was more frightening than life. You put those two things together and the goals of Billy can lead you to some parts of consciousness that are hard to explain with words. It was like truly knowing of the possibility of hell, but it's hard to understand. So anyways, you attend to your resentment honestly and you observe yourself and what you're actually like. You got to pay attention as if you don't know yourself, as if you might harbor hidden devils and then maybe they'll emerge. No. Anyways, this room used to be red. At some point I changed it to yellow to remove that part that psychologically made Billy. I had many other stuff too. It's all gone. By the time Billy was gone, I tried living a normal life. I thought of majoring in finance, finding a girlfriend, being a normal teenager, you know? I mean, I tried. I really did. But I couldn't. Some parts of me still limited my capabilities to act a certain way. I mean, I was an antisocial freak that didn't care about money or any forms of materialistic possessions. Also, when I was in high school, I never really tried talking to girls since one, I was antisocial and two, I didn't make an effort. I was aware some girls liked me and they tried talking to me, but like I said, I never thought I was anybody. So I always focused on working on myself. Now I'm 20 and since, like I said, I'm antisocial, I isolated myself from friends. After the concept of Billy was gone, I thought of killing myself. I mean, when the only thing that makes life meaningful is gone, what's the point in living a meaningless life, you know? But instead of killing myself, once again, <laughs> I had an idea that pretty much is the source that keeps me alive right now. Now instead of majoring in finance, my goal is to major in robotic software engineer. It sounds insignificant, but it's not the major that is my goal, but the vision within the major. I may not attain that vision, but at least that vision is keeping me busy, so there's that. Get one of these <laughs> coveted pieces of tail that have been built up as the grand trophy in your nothing life. You try desperately to keep it, not to protect it, but to hoard it, to keep it away from the other wolves and jackals circling your territory. And you realize all too soon that you're not good enough. That maybe there was a jerk off called Darwin after all and that you never acknowledged his existence because you knew deep inside that you were really what you feared you were. Weak and passive and ultimately broken by the ones who were made the fittest. And that through your weaknesses you built up a poison that poisoned others around you. That you loved. And the only true justice 
was to let those dominant jackals feed on you, survive off you. Now, when I first started pushing myself to become a roboticist, all I focused on was that. On top of that, I tried to be a benevolent person because of how much I messed up. I figured if I acted good, then good things will happen. I did this for 11 months. I was like a saint in those 11 months. Doing good things and working hard for my goal. You have no idea how much I tried. I thought it was gonna work. But as time passed in those months, I started to get pissed. Everything began hurting. All my fucking mind knew was math and python. Nothing else. No friends. No partying. No entertainment. Nothing but work. On top of that, I started to realize that the concept of being good and good things will happen was bullshit because the good things that I wanted was not what I was experiencing. I was tired of waking up in the same fucking yellow room. All I wanted was to feel alive, to do the things that I really wanted to do, to be the person that I really wanted to be. And I don't know. I mean, I see the people around me and see that they don't like who they are or where they are, but they'd still do the same fucking shit that makes their being every single day. They have dreams, they have hopes, but instead of making them happen, they accept what little life has given them because it's not part of their biological program to do anything different, and I don't blame them. It's hard to change and become a whole nother person. Some people try, but they just revert back to their past selves because in the end, it's not them. And I'm no different. I'm just like everyone else. The only difference is, I have this. Now look, I know you see this and you think, the book of Billy, the book of Ricky, what the fuck is all of this and where are you going with it? The mind works in the weirdest ways. If we tell ourselves that we want to be a better person, we might start going to the gym, Maybe eat a little better, maybe pick up a book or two and actually learn something new. Who knows? This pattern of action won't last a week before we go back into being a lazy sack of shits worth fucking zip. But if we establish a thought process in a notebook and make the goal into some sort of game, I have realized you can do far more than what you could even imagine. Do the things you always wanted to do. Live the life you always wanted to live. Be the person you always wanted to be. You become what you experience, ladies and gentlemen. And my goal is to become Ricky. Now, who is Ricky? Well, in my mind, Ricky is a master of all masters. The man that every man desires to be. Ricky is free to do what he wants, when he wants, and nothing can stop him. Women love him. Men desire to be him. Ricky doesn't care what others think. Instead, everyone cares what Ricky thinks. Because deep down inside, Ricky is what everyone wants to be, but are too afraid to accept it. To become Ricky, action must be done. Ricky is a work in progress. With a character like this, I don't objectively know the types of experiences that are required to create it, but I do have an idea. This is an ordered list that I have established in doing. I will place the list in the description. Everything is about experiencing and becoming in the process. Now, as you can already see, I already began the journey a while ago. The room is no longer yellow, all my childish clothes are gone. As for the behavioral aspect, I have begun picking up smoking. My music is no longer childish. I've gone into the deepest layers of the woods and do not care about going into a forest when everything is dark. I've climbed a crane. I've had sex with a prostitute. Well, it was actually an escort. But the point is, I did something I never knew I could. And as time inevitably passes, I know I will keep doing the list because I know these are the things that will make me the person I want to be, to some degree. Within the process, I will try to post entries as I have completed some of the tasks and explain how things went and how this has altered my psychology. Of course, it will take some time since I also have to live in the real world and study, work, 
and be myself in the process. Now, why post this online? Time will pass. I'm 20 right now. I don't know where I will be in the future. At the end, I couldn't keep the book of Billy. So I know I won't be able to keep this book either. So I've made it so that it ends up burned at the end of the process. The videos will be there so I can go back to them and remember these moments in time. I doubt anybody will watch this, but if someone does... Look, I know this sounds crazy, and it is. I'm not going to say this is the most rational thing anybody has done. But I know it works. In the end, I would rather try and become the person that I really want to be than to be the person that I am right now. But... I don't think anyone would understand. Anyways, I guess I'll see you in the next entry. I don't understand this. You were looking for a way to change your life. You could not do this on your own. All the ways you wish you could be, that's me. I look like you want to look, I fuck like you want to fuck, I am smart, I'm capable, and most importantly, I'm free in all the ways that you are not. Tyler's not here. Tyler went away. Tyler's gone. What? This is impossible. No, this is crazy. People do it every day. They talk to themselves. They see themselves as they'd like to be. They don't have the courage you have to just run with it. Naturally, you're still wrestling with it, so sometimes you're still you. We should do this again sometime. Other times, you imagine yourself watching me. If this is your first night at Fight Club, you have to fight. Little by little, just letting yourself become.